prices hitting all-time highs, the Bitcoin ETF is finally here, and DeFi 2.0 is healing the planet. All this and more on... I'm Luke, and this is TLDR, where we catch you up on all the headlines and important narratives from around Bankless this week. As always, there are going to be links down in the show notes so you can do a deeper dive into any of these topics. So before we start, I want to shout out our sponsor, Pool Together V4. Pool Together is a no-loss lottery, and it's a great place to start if you're new to DeFi. Deposit assets, check out the daily reward drawings, and remove your funds at any time. Dive into the pool at bankless.cc slash pool together. Andrew Yang came on the podcast this week, which we are absolutely stoked about. Andrew has been a dream guest for a long time, and the episode did not disappoint. Andrew's brand of politics has always been a pro-technology one, uh, being open-minded about novel approaches to our system of governance. And it seems like Bankless and the crypto community and Andrew Yang are trying to solve similar problems, but from different angles. Andrew wants to upgrade our political protocols, things like changing the way we do primaries and introducing new voting mechanisms. As part of dismantling the overwhelming dysfunction of the two-party system, Andrew founded the Forward Party on top of these platforms. The peak of the conversation was definitely Andrew claiming that the Forward Party will be the crypto party. What is there for, you know, uh, the crypto community in the Forward Party? I want to make the Forward Party the crypto party, truly, because I do see the alignment as very, very deep. And the parallels are so strong where you have this system, you could say the political system or the financial system, (laughs) that you see that it's failing and flailing in its various ways. And then you say, okay, maybe we could do better. In my case, I do want to try and help the political system upgrade itself and modernize itself. And I, I want to make the case to legislators that the cryptocurrency community is a force for progress, a force for innovation, a massive provider of jobs. I tweeted something where I said, rule of thumb, if you face a trillion dollar industry that could define the future, like don't screw it up. You know, like <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty simple message. It's like, guys, like please, 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 like take a bit of time to figure out what the hell you're doing here. Cause like this is a very, very significant generator of jobs and value. Um, I think that's pretty common sense. Later in the episode, we initiated Andrew into the world of Ethereum with his own .eth address, and earlier this week, Andrew minted an NFT from andrewyang.eth, and it sold for 6.9 ETH. Nice. Uh, Welcome to the club, Andrew. And it's clear that a certain brand of populism is really hot these days, and we talked about it in Market Monday this week. Um, Crypto is also a populist movement, but I think it's a different kind of populism than we're used to. It's less overt. What you see in contemporary American politics is this form of populism that panders to its ideological groups, offering simple solutions for complicated problems, uh, giving people short-term fixes that make for good sound bites. But the crypto version of populism isn't as easy. The crypto political platform is calling for an overhaul of institutions, and although we shouldn't necessarily fear change, it often brings chaos and growing pains with it. Uh, Crypto offers real solutions to fundamental problems, and every day that passes makes it more feasible to implement those solutions. That's the Lindy effect. So Danny Ryan came on Layer Zero this week to show us the kind of people working under the hood of Ethereum. The kind of person that dedicates pretty thankless hours, honestly, uh, to build a protocol that's making all of our lives better. So what kind of person is Danny Ryan? Well, he's got super long hair, like long hair. Uh, He's from Colorado and he's obsessed with hard problems. And that's actually the thing I've heard a bunch of times from these big brain core developers. They love obsessing over hard and important problems. In working for the Ethereum Foundation, Danny uses his skill set to communicate, uh, distilling problems into their fundamental components, getting everybody on the same page about things so they can bring elegant upgrades to this complex space. I really enjoy explaining things i really enjoy teaching and so i really enjoy like finding the right metaphor or the right like thing analogy to to communicate uh, a technical concept to people who maybe aren't as deep in the weeds and so because i get to deep i get to be deep in the weeds then i also get to then turn around on the other side and communicate outward the ethereum core devs met in greece earlier this month to work on proof of stake mocking up a test merge to mimic the real merge coming soon There is a lot of deep technical stuff happening here, but I think this picture is good enough for the TLDR. We like it when devs are smiling. This week, we also continued our journey down the DeFi 2.0 rabbit hole, and our coverage this week gave me a number of aha moments. 
Zeus from Olympus Dow made a long overdue appearance on State of the Nation to discuss how the Dow and its native Ohm token have mooned, while also accruing a sustainable pool of capital to back the protocol. We also covered Klima Dow, uh, which is a fork of Olympus that actually uses carbon credits to back their native token, Klima. So Klima is taking this even further with aligning the incentives of the protocol, the users, and the environment. I think on the surface of DeFi 2.0, you'll find just a new crop of memes and a mobilization of the frog army, but if you look deeper down, I think you can make a good case that some real new primitives are being unlocked. Scooby Trooples of Alchemix echoed this when he came on for a special episode this week, and that's when it all really cracked for me. In this mm -hmm. model, you put your LP tokens, you sell your LP tokens to the protocol to mm -hmm. receive the governance tokens, but if you are just receiving the governance tokens, which I'm pretty sure are newly minted, and you are selling them to do that again and again and again, how is that different than just yield the just dumping the yield farms from the original method? Where does it, where does that difference come in? So if people are only playing the strategy where they are, you know, like recycling the, you know, the the ALCX they get from the bonds back into SLP to buy more bonds, um, you know, that's essentially exactly what's going on with yield farming, especially like the the yield aggregators who who take, you know, the LP tokens and stuff like that. It's essentially the exact same thing, right. um, except that the protocol is now getting more and more and more of that liquidity share. And it's right. rooting out the toxic liquidity that's a part of that pool. It's so the it's selling kind of mechanism that forces that one way function of liquidity into the protocol. Yes. So basically, Instead of renting liquidity in exchange for inflationary governance tokens, uh, DeFi 2.0 protocols use bonding mechanisms to purchase and own liquidity in exchange for inflationary governance tokens. I think the big level up here is aligning incentives, and you've seen it in the communities forming around these new protocols. Instead of having mercenary capital just jumping around from yield farm to yield farm, people are sticking around now that they're incentivized to support the protocol over a longer time horizon. As an offshoot of our DeFi 2.0 coverage, we laid out how anybody can create a borrowing and lending market for a DeFi asset using Rari Capital's Fuse Pools. Borrowing and lending is essentially all that a bank does, and we've decentralized the borrowing and lending part, but I think we've now taken another step forward. Protocols can now be agnostic to what specifically is being borrowed and lent. This is a paradigm shift in what it means to create value, represent value, and compose value across different assets. You've heard a lot about DAOs, but what does it mean to contribute and get rewarded by DAOs? If you're starting to familiarize yourself with what a DAO uh, actually is, you may be starting to ask yourself, Ooh, what's in it for me? Well, not gonna make it Luke. What's in it for you is that work culture is changing. Work is becoming increasingly freelanced, gig-based, open, removed from the constraints of contracts and corporatocracy. DAO culture is reflective of this. You choose how much time you put in and there's a unique freedom in being able to establish your own role and work structure. DAOs need developers, community managers, content creators, designers, coordinators. But a lot of the time, DAOs aren't out there recruiting. Uh, you have to break into the community, see what it's all about, and find a place to start contributing. It's a reputation game, and your reward for contribution is ownership. So on TLDR, I usually cover just more ecosystem-wide stuff, uh, less time-sensitive. But since this was such a heavy news week, I just wanted to kind of list off the biggest headlines and see where we're at. The ProShares Bitcoin ETF started trading this week and was the fastest ETF ever to surpass $1 billion. Bearish. Total value locked in DeFi is at an all-time high. Bitcoin set a new all-time high and Ether basically set a new all-time high. Bearish. PleaserDAO healed the world by buying the one-of-a-kind Wu-Tang album that supervillain Martin Shkreli hoarded before going to jail for securities fraud. Bearish. Coinbase is launching an NFT platform. Bearish. Polygon is teaming up with DraftKings. Bearish. FTX raised 420 million 690,000. Bearish. And Facebook is trying to strong arm its way into being the centralized corporate center of the metaverse. Actually bearish. So with that, I want to quickly shout out our sponsors, Matcha, Alchemix, Ledger, and Arbitrum bullish. Also, this video wouldn't be possible without them. So thanks a lot. And finally, None of this is financial advice, ETH is risky, DeFi is risky, but we are headed west, it's the frontier, it's not for everybody, but we are glad you are with us on the Bankless journey. See you next time.
Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.